And they haven't run out of gas, I can tell you. They may stay there for three weeks or a month. Right. Mr. Long. Underwood? Um, Major Mosier, uh, I know that, you know, the state police, you can't hitchhiker down 95. How do they manage or what determines the exit versus um, <laughs> According, state, according to the state police, they, you're still on the highway. Right. So <laughs> I'm just not sure. Maybe we could maybe ask for some assistance in interpreting. We did. We, okay. uh, we met with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office and <coughs> gave them the information about what's going on on the right. off-ramps. Uh, you are allowed to be on the off-ramp versus the interstate. You are. It, it is totally different than the interstate. Maybe your you're car not allowed still. to be on the interstate at all walking. Uh, we did talk to the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. This is the best suggestion okay. to handle so, this issue. So, so we we been working with uh, Mr. Spencer on this. So, well. so let me try to get an understanding. So if I put on a sign on my back that says, uh, give me, uh, God bless me, feed me, whatever, whatever, and I'm just walking up and down the exit, you're going to tell me that I, that if we put this ordinance in place, that I would possibly be violating the ordinance. Is that correct? If you're asking for money, yes, you'd be violating I'm not the asking. Ordinance. I just got a sign on. Okay. Freedom of speech says I can, I mean, go back to the First Amendment. We, I mean, I understand. with the exception of, you know, yelling fire and that type of thing in the theater, I think it gives me that right. So if I'm willing to walk up and down the exit ramp and I'm not breaking the law, and this is where we're going to get into you. This is a soliciting statute. You'd actually have to solicit for some type of money. Would I have to verbalize that? Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to have a complainant or an eyewitness from an officer to see it happen. So I'm walking down with this sign in my hand that says, I can do that. I see that a lot in North Carolina. Right, that's what I'm asking. Just right. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's where and we're going to run They just have a sign right. that says whatever. And, and, then, and then when the light changes and you're stopped there next to them. You get to read it. Right. <laughs> and, and, and there's, there's no motion. <laughs> right. You may feel obligated to do something. I think maybe, okay, as, as we are now, we're just saying it's just an interstate Some, issue yeah. right now. I'm still wondering about enforcing it. Maybe we just look at the interstate ramps. I can't imagine them stopping on Route 1 and 207 trying to get you at 50 miles an hour. Well, it is, I, as I said yeah. earlier, it is only at, at the Carmel Church, the right Carmel Church interchange off of 95. And uh, we may want to discuss it further. I don't know. But I, I do agree with It must just be in the them. morning, though. I'm sorry? No, they're not there in the no. afternoon. They're, 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 they're there in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. They're there in the I didn't see anybody last week. Oh, so they may not be there when you come through. You were playing golf, probably. time you come through. They're there in the mornings and the afternoons. Uh, it's, a, okay. it's a safety issue the for the individuals as well. Right, because if I'm trying to yeah, beat the absolutely. truck out there and somebody's giving money to the guy in front, it's going to be an issue. Okay. Um, let's look at it. We don't have an ordinance developed. Let's look at working with the state police. Um, you might want to check with Richmond because I know they had the same issue. I think, I think maybe Hanover and Henrico. Has I think that's really Henrico. Yeah, yeah. it's really Henrico because right there on Parham Road, they used to do the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then they had problems the next week with the volunteer uh, fire department or whatever trying to get money. So but look at how they did it. The right, you couldn't stand in the medium, and you couldn't be out on the road. Just look at look at the interstate yeah. off ramps. I think that's where our problem is, um, which will make it a little easier to enforce, and we'll go from there. Thank you, Mr. Parton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, um, that takes your agenda item nine. Um, agenda item 10, is there anybody here who wanted, who wanted to see or talk about the, the hunting ordinance? I see Mr. Green. Mr. Green, did you want to talk about that? Yes, sir. Okay. We um, usually have board discussions, but all of us aren't hunters, so we wanted to ask if we could use your expertise. Um, I'll offer what expertise I have. First, my name is Richard Green, and I am in the Mattapanai District. So, chairman, well, we know you're smart. Chairman, oh, you know that already. Yeah, we know you're smart. And uh, I think I'm fully paid up on all my taxes, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, with that, I'm actually here on behalf of Gary Gray, who ah. I think initially brought this before the board, 
And um, I spoke with Mr. Parton earlier in the week and sent him an email, and I think a, a short letter was included in your package. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So basically I, I was going to present that and read that, and then if you had any questions that I felt like I could answer, I was going to offer to do that. So with that said, Chairman Thomas and members of the board, uh, on behalf of Gary Gray, uh, I would appreciate you considering the use of rifles for hunting in Caroline County. As we progress in hunting practices of the modern world, rifle hunting has proven to be a safe manner to manage and harvest deer, as well as new predators such as coyote and wild hogs. The old days of pickup trucks running down country roads at high speeds, chasing dogs and deer, are becoming less desirable in the public interest. The citizens of Caroline County need the ability to manage the natural rural areas in Caroline to help control the overpopulation of deer and predators that have increased considerably over the past few years. Caroline County has also become home to an increasing number of black bearers, and rifle hunting would be the safest method for hunting bear. Uh, I think there was some discussion about what rifles would not be permitted to, and this addresses that, they would not be permitted while hunting with deer dogs. Uh, several neighboring counties, such as Spotsylvania and Henrico County, uh, they allow hunting with rifles currently. Um, allowing the use of rifles brings the game management practices of Caroline County into a safer future while hunting. As always, thank you all for your support and dedication to our wonderful county. With kindest regards, Gary Gray. If you had any questions or... Mr. Mr. Green, um, one of the things I learned at an early age was 22 can travel almost a mile. And, and in here, we're going to eliminate 22s or allow you to hunt with 22s? Well, you would, as far as I know, you'd be allowed to shoot with 22. You Probably a larger caliber would be needed to, to shoot a deer. Larger, like a 30 out of 6, would, that would go just as far as a 22, wouldn't it? Correct. Because it's a higher muzzle velocity. Okay. And but all right, that was that was just general information. Um, the state now has the law that says you can hunt with a rifle. Right. You can currently, and I think I think what he was proposing and asking was basically to adopt the similar laws that are already in place On in neighboring groups. counties. Okay. And uh, I think if you look at the statistics in hunting accidents, uh, you'll see that it is a safe a safe method for managing game. So. Okay, and, and if you're hunting with dogs, you can't use a rifle. Correct, correct. When you're hunting with dogs, the, the animal is typically on the run. Right. The dogs are chasing the, the animal, and what happens is, you know, they go by and you shoot with a shotgun. Multiple pellets right. are going at the same time. Obviously, it doesn't travel it's not a going long a distance. Right. With a rifle, what you're able to do is sit in a tree stand or sit on a knoll, and you're actually able to look through a scope. You're able to look at the animal, determine if that's the animal that you want to harvest or not, um, and you're able to manage the game and, and take a one clean shot as opposed to at a longer distance, obviously. Yeah, I forgot you'd be scoping, too. Yeah, you'd, be sco you'd use a scope, yeah. All right, and since hunting season is getting ready to come up here, um, when you use a tree stand, please use a belt and harness to make sure you don't yeah, fall off the stand. I, I, I don't do a whole lot of hunting. I work too much. But. I understand. Okay. <laughs> um, that was, we wanted the general information. I've spoken to Mr. Gray directly, and, and he'd expressed the same things that were in his letter. Um, I think what we would have to do is have, actually have a public hearing to change our ordinance, and this would actually take effect next year, next hunting season. That's correct. You have to um, change the ordinance and have it sent to Game and Inland Fisheries before May 1st, and right. they publish it in their hunting regulations, so it would take effect next hunting season. Right. Okay. Which gives time to, you know, look at neighboring counties and, you know, ask the questions and do the research and see how they're, right. they're doing with it as well. And at least advertise and make sure people are aware. Right, and right. I, I think there was an initial misconception, though, that, that people would be running around you know, with dogs chasing deer and, and using rifles. That's, that's not the case. Now, are we talking single shot assault rifles? Typically, guns? it's, it's a, a bolt action rifle, but I'm, again, I don't, I'm not a, I don't know what the regulations are on that. I, I'm just at, what's the state? You know what the state is? 
Scott, Major Mojo, do you know what the what the state ordinance is for, for rifle hunting? I mean, we're not using... I think Alan has it right here. Larger than the 22. Yeah. But it's not a... <laughs> well, no, he's saying that in the state it says larger than the 22. You can't use a 22. You can't, yeah. Cannot. He just said it was larger than 22. No, it has to be larger than a 22. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, if you look in the board packet under uh, the document labeled Attachment 1, that, that gives you, my understanding is that gives you what is allowed under state law if you simply uh, go about the state law and, uh, and not have a local ordinance. That's the one that says um, existing county code? No. Uh, attachment 1, next, next page. Larger than 22 is what it says now. So 22 you can do, but nothing larger than 22. And now? No, the, the smaller the caliber, the further it can travel. So the larger the cartridge, oh, you're yes. able to shoot a deer, you need a larger cartridge. If you actually look at the ballistics, a larger, a larger bullet falls faster. Falls faster. But what, what am I looking at here on pay? Uh, Mr. Pardon? I don't I'm looking at it, it says model ordinance, and I assume that we went by the state or something. It says, it shall be unlawful, unlawful to hunt with a rifle larger than 22 caliber, caliber round. But that's, now, what, what that that's is, his model ordinance. Those no, are model not. ordinances that the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries Board of Directors has put forth as possibilities. Attachment 1 gives you what the state allows if you... If you were to repeal the existing county ordinance and simply go by state law, attachment one explains every every weapon I suppose that can be used. And you know, it says under under number three it says a rifle, a muzzle loading rifle, or an air rifle. I don't know, you know, to what extent caliber plays into that, but um, it simply says that rifles are permitted. So I can go out and hunt with an AK forty seven? If you I adopted can't. it, I, mean, I, I can't answer that. I, I don't think that's what he's asking. Oh, because you're, in, you're, in a shotgun, I can only have three shells. They change that? That's how long it goes I've been since I have. Okay. You're getting into more technical than my pay grade allowed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we would like to... Um, we would like to look at it some more and, and make sure we get it right. And I think what we need to do is have a public hearing to make sure we hear from as many hunters, as many folks like you who know, you know a little bit about hunting. Okay. More than me, I do most of my hunting and food line now. Gotcha. So I think we need, to, we need to at least figure out. So Mr. Parton, you've got an ordinance that's exactly what the state does now, what the state allows us to do, and that's in these options that, that we have in our packet. Look at number C. Right? Yes, uh, we have model ordinances that were right. adopted by, and, and then I think Mr. Culley passed out. Uh, there are, it's, it's under attachment. I think there's 82 or 83 possibilities uh, for different stipulations related to, to hunting that um, various localities have adopted some of, you know, some of them, but not necessarily all of them, um, and they vary. And none refer to caliber or firearm Some do, type. yes. M16s are good? AR4s? I, I can't answer that. <laughs> okay. It seems like there's, there's a lot more information. But okay, all right, we, um, we are going to pursue this matter. Um, and, and we're going to ask staff to get us, you've given us a lot of information. Can you just give us the exact stuff? what the state is saying we can do in addition to the models because because mr. gray said we were going to do exactly what the state did if we did right so how do we match that up section attachment 129 that would be what, what's in the packet that is state law i don't see anything that says attachment, attachment one it says code, code section 29.1-519 oh, sorry, sorry guns pistols revolvers, revolvers etc may be used 
This is state law. So if we okay. repeal our existing law, then the, the, the uh, if we repeal our law, we revert to state law. State law, and that's what the uh, uh, conservation. <coughs> Police Allen, but anyway, it used to be Game Warden. They changed their name, but anyway, just for lack of a better term, Game Warden would enforce if you were hunting. Then he would have only the state law to go by. This does say only three shells in a shotgun. Yeah, but that's what I said to him, and he said they changed it. I thought. Let me, let me okay. Because I, I, got, a, I got, a plug, I got a plug in my shotgun that only allowed three shells. Yeah. Okay. Crossbow. But this does say an automatic loading yes. well, or hand repeating shotgun. It doesn't specify. Rifle is rifle, muzzle loading rifle, or an air rifle. That's it. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody from the uh, game can department could come. And, yeah. And, and, uh, Right. Yeah, that's a, a, machine gun. a fully automatic gun. You pull the trigger and it just shoots. Right. Yeah, Semi-automatic, you, you pull the trigger every time and it shoots. You can't have a fully no, automatic. No, that's what, what we're saying. Anyway. Much less for hunting. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I, I, I've got one question. Um, it says here, the except groundhogs thing. Except groundhogs thing. The, the except groundhogs thing right here that's already in, in place in ours. The local firearm. No rifles larger than 22 except for, you know, for hunting except groundhogs. So I guess the question is... Can I that is done now, correct. So I can use any rifle right now to hunt a groundhog? I mean, according to any, that, any yeah. caliber. They're considered pests. Yeah, yeah, well, according I'm, to that. But I mean, Plus, yes. you're going to kill yeah. one, you're going to need a rifle. So that's already, you, you, yes. Yeah. And I don't need a tree stand or anything like that. That's correct. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> sit in the truck. And, <laughs> right. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, right. Mr. Green, we don't have a lot of expertise either. I, I understand. I don't. <laughs> So. On, on another side note, would now be an appropriate time to, for me to offer my assistance with the uh, Transportation Commission? It's kind of funny that I was here today. PRTC? Yeah. I mean, I, I know a whole lot more about the fuel business than I know about hunting. And uh, oh. if, you, if you recall, I, I'm pretty sure Mr. Seeley was part of that. And I think Mr. Taylor signed a resolution back in the late 90s when I was able to help the county, actually the school board, secure in excess of $100,000 in uh, fuel taxes that they paid um, that we got the money back for them. And um, I feel like there's, a, you were asking a whole lot of questions. Let me just say that I'm extremely familiar with the, the, the Transportation Commission set up, the 2.1%, um, the, the, the kind of the challenges that they've had implementing that, that's actually gone from the Department of Taxation to the Division of Motor Vehicles this past July. So. And what that does as a local business owner, um, I mean, E.M. Gray's been in Caroline County since 1928, and we are the only, you know, local, locally rooted fuel oil company uh, distributor in the county that's kind of left, that's made it through the years. So if you wanted our two cents worth, we'd love to be we there are. and help you with that. So. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, he wants two cents on every gallon, but, right. but so. we we do um, at, at least I, I do uh, use your fuel as I've seen you many times at the station. So um, we will take you up on your your offer. I'm gonna as we follow through. I'm gonna have Mr. Uh, Fincham or Mr. Parton get in touch with you and make sure we understand right. your position. All right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to offer that as well. So. Well, we'd be right. we'd be happy to take it. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. All right, so we're going we're gonna to move forward with the proposed changes to the hunting code after we get some input from, is it game and inland fishery? Okay. And we'll get something from there and we'll figure out what to do. And we are, um, <coughs> excuse me again, um, 10A is the authorization to advertise for this abandoned property. Any problem with that? If not, we can move ahead and, and uh, ask staff to go ahead and advertise. I think we all got the letters from the uh, Sheldons regarding some property or, or a road that's actually not used at AP Hill. Um, In the Department of the Army. I'll make a motion that we move the um, oh, thank you. road, the privatization of a road 
of Burma Road to public hearing? Second. Any motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, information and calendar items Mr. Cully has put together for us at, at my request, uh, two dollar bills, which you should have in your packet. He's going to explain those two dollar bills. One dollar bill is revenue. Oh, you got giant pictures. One dollar is your revenue, where every dollar of revenue or how we get every dollar of revenue from the county. And the other one is how we spend every dollar of revenue in the county. Mr. Cully? Um, basically, if you look at the first um, one, um, what that works out is pennies per every dollar of revenue that's raised, where that particular yeah, comes from. So uh, general property taxes are 36 cents of every dollar we raise. Other local taxes that we have are 7 cents of every. Um, permits and licenses are 2 cents of every dollar. Other local revenue, another 2 cents. Charges for services are 5 cents. Intergovernmental, which is funds we receive from basically the state and or federal government for various programs, um, 46 cents. And non-departmental, which are some things like um, fund balance and, and things that we haven't departmentalized, two cents. So that makes up how the revenue breaks down for every dollar that we get up to the 41 million and change that makes up the general fund uh, budget. Um, the, the other dollar is expenses. It's basically the same um, procedure. General government administration is four pennies on uh, every dollar we spend. Um, public safety is 15 cents. Um, public works, four cents. Health and uh, welfare, uh, six cents. Um, education, 50 cents. Debt retirement, nine cents. Public utilities, seven cents. And other, which is all the, the small things, it's hard to put all those in to, because they're really less than a penny, um, are, are five cents. And that other includes parks and rec and cultural, community development, judicial administration, capital projects, non departmental. Um, and each one of those expenditures comprising 1% or less of the total expenditures. So that's sort of how the, the, the funds come together for, for expenditures um, in the current budget. This way, FY14. As 50 cents. But that's the, the total school budget. So it's not just local funds. That's, the to that's our total expenditures of all funds. Right, so that, that way includes so. federal funds are included in. Yeah, in that's this. everything they get. So that's their, okay. that's the total school budget. That's not local money to the school budget. That's the total school budget. School debt retirement is in this 50 cents. No, that's in our nine cents. That's in our, okay. Debt retirement funds are our fund, our, our, all of our debt retirement, right, including right. schools. Right, okay. So, so. This is everything, and this is a, you know, I, I asked you to put together, and, and this is exactly what we got. Maybe we should do it again as just county dollars. County tax dollars? County tax dollars. Okay. It can take a little bit longer, but. We don't meet right. again until November. Yeah, all right. So county, ta county tax dollars, and then we can see, because this is, <laughs> this is, this is for everything counting what comes from the federal and state governments. Right. So this is everything. the giant, this is the real picture of everything. Right. But if a citizen comes to you and says, what do you do with the dollar I give you in my tax revenue, we would have to break that out differently. Yeah, because then you have to pull all that state and federal, so that would change the revenue so, and the expense. Okay. If, can you do that one more time? We will work on it. Mrs. Hatcher, can you do that one more time? It's not due until November. I think this is this is a good this is a good good one just to see yeah. and and I do appreciate you putting it together in, in yeah, less than of, a week. So. Well, some of those things. Well, this was easy. We pulled it out of the budget. Trying to pull the local dollars out when we don't budget that way right. makes that a lot I more know. difficult. So some some more departments more. are easy. That we don't have any we don't have any state and federal money in that department. It's real easy. It's lo local. But then when you get into social services and all yeah. the various breakdowns, schools, all the various break those begin. A, a little bit uh, more difficult commissioner revenue treasurer so it's a lot of them that have we have mixed money in on the revenue side to, to match that up so it is a, a, a 
it's a lot tougher because we don't we look at the total expense yeah. of the department, not based on whether it's expense of a local dollar or a state dollar. And this is this is very good because you can see the discussion is spurring now, which is exactly what what we wanted to do. I think the next step is to have just local dollars, so we could say, you know, you spend a thousand dollars in taxes. This is how your thousand dollars was broken out through the rest. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <coughs> Just out of curiosity, what was the purpose of the timing of this? Was there a purpose to the timing of this now, or to have this, or is it just purely informational? The purpose to having this was purely coincidental, because I spent a day last week with Courtney Rogers, who is our financial advisor. Um, not the whole day, but about four hours. And during the conversations with Mr. Rogers, we talked a lot of, about county funding, budget, debt, things of that nature. So I got the idea while talking to him to see where it went. Purely coincidental. Nothing else is coming up. No hidden the, agenda. The only, the only concern I guess I have on this is, and, and you're, you're a baseball fan just like I am, we can take numbers. I can take any number. I can take a guy who bats 100 in the Yankees lineup, and, but I, if he gets that one for one hit on a daylight against a lefty, he's batting 1,000. So we can, take, we can take numbers and we can crunch them any way, any way that we want. My concern here with some of this is we're, we're, we're taking the education dollar and we're saying it's 50 cents. And, and that can be misleading because a lot of that money is coming from outside sources, that education. I had Mr. Cully put together something when I saw this, because we, we have a bond referendum coming up, so that's why I was just a little bit curious about this. I had Mr. Cully put together what the local amount we put on operating towards the schools. And Mr. Cully has that to distribute. If you compare us to other other counties, we spend 28% of our local budget goes to operating of the schools, which is significantly lower than surrounding counties. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, so we can take numbers and we can, yeah, we can take numbers oh. and we can do all kinds of different things with that. So, that we chart are, right there on education can be a little bit, I think, also a little bit misleading as well. No, well, it was, it was definitely not an intention to mislead anybody or anything, and, and I think I've I've said I was going to enthusiastically support the bond referendum, so I wasn't trying to do anything against it. But what I really wanted to do was to, to spur a little discussion, just like we were having here, and have some thought for later on about where we are with, you know, what each dollar is. And actually, Mr. Black, as you and I are both very depressed, it doesn't matter what anybody for the Yankees is batting right now. Um, and I hope we get that $25 million back a year, but that's a whole other story. So. Really, it was just to, just to give you a see, um, this is total spending. We're asking again to, to redo it again to look at county spending. Nothing more than uh, information for all of us. Okay? All right, Mr. Cully, would you finish with your um, informational calendar items and everything else you have? And I can put it back. Um. Don't forget we have a 6 o'clock, we need to recess the meeting tonight to a 6 o'clock tomorrow night in the EOC. Um, it's critical that we um, start on time. The schools only have about 30 minutes to give us before some of their members, and I think the superintendent have to go off to another meeting in Landor, so they'll need time to, to get to that. So we will, really need to start. And, and we really only wanted, the only thing we wanted, um, as we said to the school board before, was an idea uh, of their project for the, the high school and the other school just so we would have that information between now and election to go out and try to help them sell that. So, and then Port Royal will be here as well. After and that. then we do Port Royal at 7 o'clock to talk about the boundary adjustment. Um, next week is uh, National uh, School Lunch Week. So I think uh, you've all been invited to... I got Wednesday. To Lunch go somewhere through. Wednesday? The whole week. But oh, I, okay. Yeah, I, I was wondering why I showed up the whole week, and then I said, <laughs> no, I thought Wednesday. Uh, next Saturday is Bowling Green uh, Harvest. Wait. Well, actually, the 19th after the. Yeah, I got the 16th as lunch, yeah. And another important date is the 22nd. We have our uh, RACSB legislative get together at their facility over across from the high school. I know they're looking forward to everybody um, uh, being there so they can show us the, uh, the good work that those folks do every year um, for the citizens here. Are you going to be uh, there? You going to be there? Jeff and Jeff will be there. Uh, no, CS, uh, CSP, twenty second. Hey, yeah, it's on my calendar. I'm gonna try to make it. I'm gonna be coming That's back good. from my mother's 86th birthday. Told, and we already told um, uh, Mr. Collins that you were gonna be out. I left him a message. So. <laughs>
we I passed it on Thank to you. when I saw it. Um, frog level, the frog level days are 26. Um, we have the um, dedication of the uh, parallel, uh, 38th parallel of the work that's been done out there on the 11th, and that's uh, listed at 3 p.m. They've done a lot of nice work out there. They're not quite finished, but if you've been over there to see what they've done, they've uh, really got uh, in the plaques and all just uh, very nice. Um, and of course, the VACO conference is also going along to be part of that. Our next board meeting uh, after tomorrow will be the 14th. So note on your calendar that's a Thursday night, uh, the 14th. Thursday, the 14th. Yeah, Tuesday, the 12th would be our normal board meeting, but because of VACO, we move it to Thursday, uh, traditionally. So I'm sure we'll need another reminder or two. Uh, we, we will remind you all again. Thank you. That's all I have and to Mr. report. Mr. Taylor is going to vote at VACO because I'm, I'm coming back for the dedication. All righty, closing board comments, Mr. Black? Uh, none at this time. It's the only time you're going to get it. Mr. Seeley? I just remind everybody Harvest Festival is the 19th of October. Thank you, Mr. Coley. Mr. Underwood? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Akers? Yes, sir. Mr. Taylor? No, sir. My only one, since we don't have another meeting until the 11th, is I would like to commend Kevin Whiteman on the, until the 14th. The 11th is the meeting. Mr. Whiteman has done an outstanding job dedicating his time and, and direction and the enthusiasm of those middle schoolers for this 38th parallel project is just outstanding. So he's done a wonderful job and I, I really appreciate him for doing that. And I can hear him when he's working over there from my house. So I do appreciate that. Oh, and the other one is there, Major Mosier. They all, you know, they've been there. I think I was there a couple of times. They've been there every Wednesday and they've done a great, a great job. So um, wonderful thing. And uh, we'll now take a motion to adjourn till tomorrow. Recess to recess to tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock in the EOC. That, that's fine. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Peace.